Delivering fascinating subjects, interesting talk, and boobs and fart jokes. AD on iHeartRadio. All right then, Funkhauser. Now let's try and do some of the news. The X Files is coming back for a limited six episode run. Yeah, saw that. Are you excited about that? Did you watch the X Files back in the day? I never got into it. Yeah. I, I mean, I saw a couple of them. Ooh, UFOs. Ooh, drama. Uh, you know, and then I was a, a Duchovny fan for Californication. But, right. Uh, but I'm was excited that just to see the, the boobs, or was that because of Duchovny? The boobs were an added bonus. Didn't expect yeah. the boobs. A lot of boobs in that. Good wow. times. A lot of boobs. Good ones, too. Like the librarian, I think. I can't remember. Lots of uh, good ones. Yeah. Do you ever? Did you ever see back in the day? I, I think it was in the very early '90s, maybe even the late '80s that it came out. Like, did you ever see a show called Dream On? No, uh. Uh-uh. It was like a normal sitcom. It was like a sitcom. I can't remember the name of the guy that starred in it, but he's one of those dudes that if you saw him, you're like, oh, this guy. Mm. And I don't know if it's on Netflix or what, but like, look for a sitcom called Dream On. I do remember uh, Wendy Malick was in it. Um, she's that chick that was uh, Nina on uh, Just Shoot Me. You, you know her? I think so. It, it, again, it, you look up a picture of Wendy Malick, you'll be like, oh, her. But Dream On oh, was yeah, it, Dream On was a sitcom, and it was like I don't know, it, it was like any sort of like early to mid '90s situation comedy. Looked like it was written like it, uh, but it had boobs in it. Like wow. I think it was on HBO, and it was like it was like watching Friends except Monica gets naked. It's good, <laughs> like it's good stuff. Find it and and watch it. It's I don't I don't huh. I don't think it's on Netflix. It's but si- it was six seasons. It went for six seasons from 1990 to 1996. Is on HBO and then Fox edited. Right? Yeah, yeah. So like, don't mm-hmm. watch the Fox edited version. Watch the uh, if you can find. I don't know. Maybe they have it on HBO Go or something. But it's like a really funny show with nudity. It's great. And it's not like, it's interesting because like most edgy television shows now with nudity and swearing in them, like they have a whole different feel to them. You know, it's like, I love it. Louis is a fantastic show. It's an amazing, amazing show. The Louis C.K. sitcom where he plays a, a fictionalized version of himself. Amazing. Awesome. Fantastic. But it's nothing like a traditional sitcom. And that's what's kind of so amazing about Dream On. It's like a traditional sitcom. I think there might even be a laugh track. And then there's, I think, nudity and swearing in it. And they smoke pot in it. Like, I remember there was one episode where uh, they, they bust their kid with, uh, with pot and smoke it. And they go, ooh, this is a lot stronger than the stuff we used to do back in the day. But I wildly recommend it. Because if you're a fan of laughing and of boobs, well, then you'll like Dream On. <laughs> I made a mistake yesterday. What was it? Uh, I uh, I've never seen Scarface or Goodfellas. You know. Oh, okay. Big I've never seen Scarface. Well, I saw the last ten minutes of it, uh, and the first ten minutes of Goodfellas on Spike TV. Uh huh. And uh, I th- I think I may have done that wrong, because uh, I I may be a, you know you know the end scene of Scarface you know every, the guns and everybody's no I've never seen every, it but oh. I I know about yeah what, Spike TV did they censor that oh yeah it's it's so like you know washed over that uh, I think I missed all the boobs and uh, most of the language so I'm gonna have to go watch that like for real but I I got stuck watching it and I'm like I shouldn't be doing this because it's no, like you know it's like, like a Censored Watching the edited for broadcast last ten minutes of a movie like Scarface is just uh, that. Yeah, then it no, you're fades right. That out, and then you get like a mistake. term life insurance commercial. <laughs> you got to wait two minutes for the movie to come back. It sucks. Yeah. Anyway, That's David nice. Hasselhoff. He oh wait says, a second. Back to back to yeah. the X Files thing. The uh, did did you watch it back in the day? No, I mean, I saw bit pieces here and there, but I, I think I was just, I missed the boat on that one. Yeah. I liked it when they, when the episodes were standalone, because, you know, back in the day when it was on, 
you know, you couldn't watch it on demand. And unless you wanted to set your VCR, you know, like who, who knew how to successfully do that? Answer, nobody. It was hard to keep up with something like that. At least it aired in England at a time where I wasn't at home or watching TV. And I just, I never got into it. So when the episodes were standalone, like contained in, in one episode, it was cool. But then when they got into the, who is the smoking man? Who is, you know, Mulder's father? Will him and Scully ever get together? What are they going to do with their kid? And all that sort of stuff. Like, that's where they lost me because I just couldn't keep up and it got so involved. But yeah, X-Files coming back. Limited six episode run. Kind of makes me want to go back and watch the original series. I wonder what they're going to be doing this time. This time, they'll probably set out in search of Hillary Clinton's emails. <laughs> or maybe they'll unravel the conspiracy of why the, Oct- uh, why the Oscars don't like black people. Anyways, uh, Sharknado, yes. Uh, David Hasselhoff says Sharknado 3 will be the worst movie ever. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge to me, <clears throat> Johnny Depp. Go on. Antonio Banderas. Yes. He says... Uh, <laughs> Was that racist? It's a fun name to say. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> he says uh, society places unfair pressure on women to seem youthful. Yeah. Then he had a hearty belly laugh over that time he dumped Melanie Griffith because she started looking like a horrific wax figurine. Pot, kettle, black, gone. <laughs> Chloe Kardashian says her brother Rob has social anxiety. Wow. Apparently a side effect of being an insufferable dirtbag. Oh, oh, hey, hey, Facebook's letting me back in. Oh, oh, oh joy oh, to the hold world. Hold on a second. Wait, what, uno momento, por favor. Click, 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 dub, 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 dot, click, drag. I wonder what mm. it's going to tell me about... Uh, it's like, who are you really? Answer these three questions. What was the first street you lived on? Name your first pet. Well, ask me for my mom's birthday, and I put it in, and they're like, no, that's wrong. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> but I think, like, if you say it's, like, you know, February 15th or something like that, you got to, you got to, like, you got to spell it right. You know, if you put, like, 1-5-T-H, you got to remember that that's how you did it. So, like, birthdays can be hard to remember. Mm. I always liked the one that was, uh, what, what was your school mascot? <laughs> What was yours? Uh, Cougar. (laughs) Which I think is hilarious because at the time they came up with uh, Cougar Cougar as a school mascot. (laughs) I don't think Cougar meant what it means today. Uh, Yeah. So a hearty belly laugh was had by all. Your your team, your school mascot was a scorpion? Yeah. Sting ya. (laughs) Did they have like... (laughs) Did they have like a mascot at basketball? Oh, yeah. Basketball games, like dancing around like Scorpy the Scorpion or something like that. Yeah, with the multiple hands and the tail that goes up with the sharp point at the end. That's some creepy crap, dude. It is very creepy. Uh, What else? Iggy Azalea got breast implants. Yeah, nobody noticed because she got like, you know, kind of inconsequential breast implants. She's, I guess, she she was a mosquito bite chick and, and she did not opt for the enormous... Very obvious honkers. She I, just said, got, da, know, da. Da. I said, who that? Who that? I said, do that? Do that? Iggy Azalea got breast implants. <laughs> that, that, that's actually a really passable. I thought you knew that. Knew that. Look at my I, boobies. A, boobies. It's <laughs> very passable. <laughs> Iggy Azalea impersonation. It's very funny, Funkhauser. <laughs> uh, for a while before she became this big omnipresent star. And when people ask me questions, I'd be like, all right, first things first, I'm the realist. (laughs) And that never got old uh, until everybody knew who Iggy Azalea was. And people were like, dude, are you quoting Iggy Azalea? Aren't you supposed to be this kind of, like, credible rock guy? I was like, shut up. Let's go ahead and take that card from you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me just uh, adjust your resume accordingly. (laughs) Uh, Iggy Azalea got breast implants. Do do it again, Funkhauser. I said, who that? Who that? Check out my (laughs) boobay, (laughs) boobay. Uh, I thought yeah, you knew this, pre- knew this. <laughs> uh, I think she only got them because she figured guys would fancy them. Okay. Uh, I think we can be knew. done with the news I already though. knew. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave on that, that low note. Oh, man. So, uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you saw this, if you were following this. But you remember Monet Davis, Funkhauser? Nope. Who's that? She was uh, she was the girl that played 
She was the girl that played in the Little League World Series, the heroine of uh, the Little League World Series, like amazingly talented and playing with boys and kicking all sorts of ass. Well, she is uh, not only a hero of the Little League, but she's also a total class act at the age of 14. She did not play the victim card when a college player called her a slut over Twitter, 14-year-old girl. Uh, being called a slut over Twitter. I, I don't know if you uh, caught the whole story or not, but uh, Bloomberg University's Joey Castleberry, junior first baseman, he was thrown off of the team after tweeting. Uh, by the way, Monet, Monet Davis, she's uh, having a movie made about her life by Disney. And uh, he tweeted, Disney is making a movie about Monet Davis. What a joke. That slut got rocked by Nevada. In the World Series. Now, incredibly tasteless (laughs) to be calling a 14-year-old girl that. I mean, you know. You know what? That's kind of an ugly word. And I don't use it. It's weird because there's plenty of other words that I use on a regular basis that I'm sure offend a lot of people. But that, that word, slut, to me, it's such an ugly word. And I just, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't, as much as I, as much. As much as I might have a burning hatred for the female I'm discussing, I can't ever bring myself to use that word. So I found it absolutely disgusting and deplorable that he would use it to describe a 14-year-old girl. But what's interesting about this is Monet Davis, this girl who killed it in the Little League World Series, incredibly talented, driven little girl. Instead of playing the war on women or race or victim card like a lot of people would do in this particular situation, she's standing up for Castleberry. Not that she needed to do that. Not that she needed to do that in any way, shape, or form. Look, he was an idiot college kid. That's what college kids do. They say and do idiotic things. And uh, he got thrown off the team for his idiotic, insensitive, offensive tweet. And you know what? Maybe he deserved to be thrown off the team. Strike that. He deserved to be thrown off the team. There's no maybe about it. But what's very interesting and what's very impressive about Monet Davis is she advocated for this guy to have a second chance. And she is advocating for this guy to have a second chance right now. She said that she's reached out to university officials asking that they reinstate him. She says everyone makes mistakes. Everyone deserves a second chance. I know he didn't mean it in that type of way. I know people get tired of seeing me on TV, but sometimes you got to think about what you're doing before you do it. It hurt on my part, but he got hurt even more. If it was me, I would want to take that back. I know how hard he's worked. It's true. He's playing sports at a college level. That involves a lot of dedication. And she said, I know how hard he's worked. Why not give him a second chance? University released a statement to the media confirming that Davis had reached out. The uh, statement reads, her request demonstrates the type of person she is, her level of maturity and the empathy that her family and coach teaches her. However, his consequences will be reviewed as is common in disciplinary actions like this. Way to go. As someone who has great difficulty turning any cheek whatsoever, I find that incredibly admirable. Admirable. Sometimes you feel like it's cool to turn the other cheek and give people the benefit of the doubt even when they don't deserve it.